Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's edition of Six Minute Saturday. Can you believe it's episode 17? I can't believe that it's episode 17. Anyway, we are giving you great marketing tips and great insights in six minutes, usually more, um, but uh, we try to do it within six minutes. And these are actionable tips, things that you could actually use in your business. So we hope that this is a value. Thank you very much for subscribing below. And before we get to today's broadcast, let me just say a little something. And that is, if you notice that I was a little flat for episode 16, it's because I was. Unfortunately, my dog of 14 and a half years passed away the night before. So I didn't bring the energy last week. I know that I didn't. I know it was flat. So uh, apologize for that. But thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching and being great, uh, great loyal viewers and subscribers. I really do appreciate everybody taking the time to watch. So today we are going to talk about, this is episode two of well, this is really episode 17 of part two how to build a simple lead generation funnel so as we normally do ladies and gentlemen here i'm going to start the clock and we are going to do this in six minutes ready on your mark get set go fantastic clock is ticking tick 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 here is the slides Let's, you know, I love the visuals. I'm a big fan of the visuals. You absolutely need to have it when you're talking about stuff like this. So how to build a simplified lead generation funnel. Obviously, if you want some of these slides, just do me a favor, Tina, at csuitesocialmedia.com, and I will be more than happy to give them to you. Great. Okay, so remember what we talked about last week. Why are we talking about lead generation in the first place? Because there's a lot of value to you as a business owner. It helps you grow your business and become more efficient, grow better, grow faster, grow stronger. Why is that? Because you've got marketing automation and you've got marketing working for you while you're sleeping. That's right. We're talking about lead generation and the digital marketing concept. Uh, you have a shorter sales cycle because the leads that you bring in are people who are qualified. Increased conversions, that's going from a stranger to a lead. We're going to talk about this in today's episode. It frees you up to spend a little bit more time selling, less time on annoying administrative tasks, um, and higher, fast, higher and faster growth. So what is lead generation? When we're talking about lead generation, remember everyone, this is a process. This is a marketing process of stimulating and capturing interest in a product or service, specifically what you're offering to develop a sales pipeline. A sales pipeline consists of leads or people who are interested in what you have to offer. That brings us to the definition of a lead. Again, lead generation is a process to get leads. What is a lead? Well, it seems very, very, rather obvious. A lead is a person who has indicated some level of interest. It could be about you or your company. That's all that it is. What are we doing? Really, we're going from, um, we're going from stranger to visitor. So the first step of the lead generation process is attract. We are trying to people to attract people potentially interested in what we have to offer. Then the next step of that is the conversion. And you can see how I have the rest of the graph. This is, by the way, by HubSpot. This, this image, you can see that we have part of it actually ghosted out. And there's a reason for that. I want you to just be concentrated right now in this particular part of the process. Remember, lead generation is a process. This is the process of, in the beginning, step one is attraction. Taking strangers and hopefully making them visitors, right? Strangers are people who, they can be anybody. A visitor is somebody who is more likely to become a lead. So let's talk about how we are able to do that. So step one, attract. But how, how do you attract people when nobody knows who you are? And there's so much competition online for it right now. Um, everybody is trying to get attention. And that is really, it's becoming harder and harder to do. So here are a few actionable strategies. I've included five, and I hope that you put these to the test and that you really start experimenting. Number one, you can write and publish articles on your website. 
Ladies and gentlemen, if you are not writing and if you are not producing content, then do me a favor, turn this video off right now and go write. Every single week, you should be producing some form of content. It could be written, it could be visual, or it could be audio like a podcast. Number two, you can write and publish articles on LinkedIn. And the reason why I'm concentrating on this, on this writing articles is because that is the easiest, usually the easiest thing for people to do. But you can substitute write and publish articles for write and publish videos or write and record podcasts, okay? The content is kind of interchangeable. Number three, and this is a great strategy, so pay attention to this. It's the reason that I bolded it out for you. You can write and publish articles on other sites, also known as guest posting. There's a reason for that because their site, especially the ones I'm gonna show you in the next slide, probably have a lot more traffic than your site, than your website. Most websites, mine included, don't have a whole lot of traffic right? Nobody's coming to them on a regular basis the way that they are with some other content hubs, I'll call them. So, uh, and what do I mean by those other sites? Well, sites like a Forbes or sites like an Inc. I'm going to talk about two that I think that are really good for financial advisors. Number four is you can post updates on social media linking to those articles once you have them either on your website or you have them linked in or in other sites. And number five, you can use the same strategy. Again, you could substitute this kind of content part for videos on YouTube or a podcast. So we've got a few minutes left. Let's talk about how we're going to bring that stranger to becoming actual visitor. I just talked about that strategy about writing and posting on other, um, on other websites. Well, here are two examples that are great for financial advisors. They could be also great too if you're, in a, if you're a business owner. I encourage you to check them out. So the first to the left is Iris XYZ, I-R-I-S dot XYZ. And here is Dana Ann Spatch, who, wrote, uh, who recently wrote a blog, an article on what age should I start making 401k withdrawals. What you're seeing is that this, this uh, where, where it shows Dana's picture, that's what you see at the end of the article. Okay, so it has a link to your website. Remember, we're trying to get, we're trying to attract people. We're trying to attract leads. We're trying to attract people to come to our website and then take the next step, lead two. That is a little teaser there for next week. Step one, attract. We're getting people interested in who we are. We want them to become a stranger to now a visitor to our website this guest posting on sites like Iris. And on the right-hand column, that's me over there. In case you didn't recognize me, we are uh, Financial Poise. I encourage you to check out my article on, on, um, on Facebook ads. But Financial Poise also is a big content hub for, um, for advisors, for business owners, for lawyers, for accountants, anybody that wishes to write about um, subjects like that. So six minutes are up. Next week, we're gonna talk about the, um, the second stage in the lead generation process, and I actually have a lead, a simple lead generation funnel already built out for you. So tune in to next week, and everybody have a super, super Saturday. Thanks again for listening. I'll talk to you soon. Take care, bye.